First of all, how bad or how good are things in Hong Kong with regards to equality uh, of the sexes and uh, are the right policies being employed? Well, uh, the Equal Opportunities Commission in Hong Kong has been established for almost 25 years. And we also have a Women's Commission in Hong Kong for almost 20 years. Uh, in a number of policy addresses in the past, uh, the uh, government has uh, introduced a number of uh, follow-up actions uh, to uh, take care of aftercare uh, uh, for children uh, at home and also promoting family-friendly policies and gender mainstreaming in the government. Um, in the past few years, the government has uh, raised these as uh, important equal opportunities measures in uh, their policy address. However, uh, if we look at uh, the achievement versus the inadequacies, uh, we can see that uh, there's heightened awareness on uh, what is equal opportunities and uh, uh, what is discrimination. And there is also equal pay for equal work. However, if we look at uh, gender mainstreaming, it seems like the endorsement has been more pro forma, whereas when it down goes down to the fine tuning of the implementation, we haven't uh, actually achieved the uh, gender sensitive or uh, refined fine tuning of the policies so that uh, we can have substantive equity. So take, for example, um, uh, if we get, yes. Hmm. Yes. Please, uh, please carry on. I was just going to ask you about how things have evolved during COVID with so many people made uh, unemployed that, you know, when things start to go back, uh, do the youngest and poorest female parts of the population suffer the most? And, and that's something people are worried about. Yes, that, that's exactly what I mean by fine tuning uh, uh, gender mainstream when we have uh, uh, public policies. Uh, for example, in the government's responses to COVID-19, we to, need to consider the needs of specific target groups and the ramifications of some of the restriction responses on the health and mental health. For example, women who are homemakers and who are working from home suffer uh, more family stress and domestic violence during COVID-19. And uh, there are more women casual workers who are under greater financial and inse uh, financial insecurities and uh, job losses. Um, we also see a rise in women and girls uh, seeking legal abortion from the Family Planning Association uh, during the uh, first eight months of this year. Uh, it's a 32% increase over last year's uh, numbers. So you can see that uh, women uh, have spe uh, special needs that need to be addressed when we look at uh, uh, restriction measures. And uh, we also need to think of the uh, social support that will be needed. Because uh, when social services are also being shut down during the restrictions and social distancing, uh, the support measures would affect uh, women who are in need. For example, women uh, 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 with domestic violence uh, do not have uh, uh, easy access to the women's shelters because some of them have more social distancing measures and they cannot go out uh, uh, to bring the children in and some of these restrictions have made it inaccessible. Similarly, the suspension of some of the social services and support services have affected uh, people with disabilities uh, who are more vulnerable for infection as well as for the sexual minorities uh, uh, LGBT uh, 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 groups face greater uh, stress because they can no longer have easy access to their social network. So, uh, and if we look at um, um, lack of sensitivity uh, to uh, the ethnic minorities uh, in some of these measures at the uh, COVID-19 uh, quarant uh, quarantine centers, um, the religious and dietary, dietary needs of uh, some of the ethnic minorities uh, were not being taken care of when Muslim uh, uh, people were, who consume halal food are being served food with uh, pork. So these are the fine tuning of the uh, policies when uh, during implementation that needs to take into the special needs of different specific groups who are uh, disadvantaged or marginalized. 
Fanny, let's just quickly move to and just keep uh, the, the answers brief, if you would. Fanny, can you just tell us, you know, we've got women in uh, Hong Kong still earning about 22% less than their male counterparts. Then we look further in the corporate world, we can see how board representations of, uh, of females uh, is woefully behind that of men. How concerned are you and what should be done about that specifically, those items, particularly, let's say, take the latter one about boards. Do we need quotas? Quickly, please. Yes, uh, we you know we have tried to set targets, but there is still entrenched mindsets and uh, and attitudes and perceptions that are very resistant to uh, to having quotas and targets because they feel that that is a uh, uh, special measures that would uh, in, uh, introduce uh, reverse discrimination. Uh, when we talk about gender mainstreaming, we need to uh, consider changing uh, uh, culture, changing mindset, which is uh, which go beyond just anti-discrimination legislation. We need across the board uh, education, uh, civic education, to introduce uh, mutual respect, inclusion, which are more aligned with uh, Asian culture. Uh, rather than just the right base, uh, individual human rights base type of legislation. Because they just set the bottom line, the boundary, but they do not change culture. Uh, Fanny, yeah, you talked about the limitations there of the policy response to this. We're expecting to hear from Carrie Lam, of course, the chief executive of Hong Kong, in her annual address at around 11 a.m. Uh, local time. Would you expect her to address inequality? And what specifically would you prescribe in terms of that policy response, despite those limitations? What can they be doing now to address some of these challenges? Well, I think in the past few years, they continue to say that they endorse uh, main, uh, gender mainstreaming. What is important is that we should go uh, uh, into more fine tuning so that these uh, mindsets, uh, this gender sensitivity should trickle down to the management and the frontline level so that uh, in implementation, the special needs of uh, different groups of women uh, should be addressed. because. Uh, Gender equality is multifaceted. It affects uh, different groups of women uh, in different ways, and we should look at this specific needs. Uh, but uh, more importantly, we should also build a culture of uh, inclusion, mutual respect, and uh, coordination, uh, collaboration, uh, rather than just looking at individual freedom uh, and uh, rights. Uh, I think we should go beyond that into building a more harmonious and an inclusive culture.